So today I'm going to show you how you can use um, a new evaporator with an old R22 system. Uh, this evaporator right here is brand new. See it's made by Heatcraft. And what the deal is with it, uh, the walk-in cooler just got a couple of really bad leaks. One right on the distributor right here. So it's on a brass component which would be difficult to braise without melting down. And then um, it had a couple of other leaks just in the coil. So. Uh, we decided that it was better to just replace the entire evaporator. So since R22 is so expensive per pound, we're actually not going to put R22 back into this unit. But in order for it to be compatible, you have to check a couple of things. One, you need to look at the kind of oil that is in the compressor and make sure your replacement refrigerant is going to work with that oil. Because some of that oil needs to be carried throughout the system. And if it's not compatible with the refrigerant, it won't properly keep things lubricated. Um, Think about your expansion valve it has a moving part and that part needs to be lubricated as well as uh, the compressor itself that that gas coming back is supposed to have a little bit of oil in it so that it can just keep things moving freely so we're going to be putting um, a replacement refrigerant that is rated for both high temp mid temp and low temp applications in r22 uh, and in that case that is r422b it's like brand name is NU22 or NU22. And the expansion valve we're going to be using is this one here. So you can see it lists R22 or 407C. Um, and then it gives us our temperature range of negative 20 to positive 50. And we're going to be using it with that R22 replacement. So that's fine, even though it doesn't list our exact refrigerant we're going to be putting in here. Now looking at the actual evaporator, you can see they send two little orifice bits. These go into the distributor. We've got a one half and we've got a three quarter. Now you have to look at your side cover in order to figure out which one you're actually going to use. You look at your model number. In this case ours is 0095 after the CEL. You look at this chart right here. Go down to that model, 0095, I've got it squared there. And then we're going to use the L1 half for the R22 column. If you could find the kind of refrigerant and valve you're using in one of these columns here, then you would just go down and use either the 3 quarter or half according to this chart. So since we're using R422B or new 22 we're going to be putting the L1 half nozzle. So this will allow us to use this evaporator with the existing system with a cheaper refrigerant and we don't have to replace the condensing unit yet. So, you know, if you've got the money for replacing both maybe it's a good idea to just do both but this way they can at least get a few more years out of that condenser and then when the condenser goes bad uh, you would probably put in a new condenser that is a modern refrigerant maybe something like r449a or r448a then you'd have to change the expansion valve at that time as well so we won't <clears throat> we won't take this other nozzle out we'll actually leave this in the evaporator in the event that if this gets swapped they can Cut the valve out, pull that nozzle, and put in the proper size one. Because I'm guessing when the system goes bad, they'll probably just replace the condensing unit. These things are shipped with a little pre-purge of nitrogen. So we're going to just deburr this. Be careful to not let that burr fall down into the pipe. They send a little like snap disc in as well. I like to put it so that the one half part is facing up. So that if you look down in there, you can confirm what's in there. And to use the end of my deburring tool, I'll just pop the guard off and then press it down. There it is. And you can pull the instructions out for your valve and we're good to install it every direction except upside down. So we're going to install it this way. So I've just got this saturated rag wrapped right there and I pulled the sensing bulb away so that we don't overheat that. the valve body is still cool enough that you can hold your fingers on it. So we're gonna have to reuse this.
so much strenuous than I expected. So, pulled the vacuum on it for like 30 minutes, and now we're just adding in the charge. Got it marked. Mine set's getting nice and cold. Starting to cool off in here pretty nicely. You can see it's not frosted. We're getting sweating on all the ends. It's a really good sign. The wiring was pretty simple. Just brought the power in on L1 and then L2. And then I moved one of the wires so that the fans would run on a higher speed. 